Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. If we haven't met before, I'm an Etsy seller. So the main things that I sell are organization printables and I also have a bunch of spreadsheets which I've designed specifically for Etsy sellers based on my experience as an Etsy seller. So I have an inventory spreadsheet, a pricing calculator and an income and expenses tracker. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through how I use the income and expenses tracking spreadsheet. I'll include a link below this video to the other um, spreadsheet tutorials if you're interested in them as well. So you will need Microsoft Excel to use these spreadsheets or you can also use them in Google Docs which is a free online tool and I believe they will also work in Numbers for Mac. So as an Etsy seller the main things that I like to track when it comes to the money side of things are my income, my expenses, uh, my tax deductions and any income earned from craft shows because craft shows are really time consuming. I do like to know whether they're actually worthwhile, so I do track that as well. So in this spreadsheet, it's got a whole bunch of tabs, and in here I've got two examples of basically how you would use them. So if you do are interested in purchasing these spreadsheets and you don't want to rewatch this video, you can just come in here and um, follow the example. So if it has a little red uh, triangle on the corner, that will give you instructions, and there's also downloadable PDF instructions as well. So let's go through the first tab, which is the annual summary. So in this tab here, you can set a goal for each month of the year. I love goal setting because then you can track your progress, see if uh, all the stuff that you're doing is paying off. So I'd like to have my goal and then my actual. And this is all linked to a back spreadsheet here where you can record all of your income by category. And then it will feed through, this here will feed through automatically to the front page. So all you need to do is fill in your goals and it will automatically update once you've populated the spreadsheet here. And then we can see how much profit we actually made. You can track when expenses were really high. You can see, okay, did that advertising campaign pay off when you spent 500 bucks on Facebook ads? When you released a new product, did you see an income, an increase in income when you did a guest post on a blog's website, etc. So tracking your statistics is really good because it helps you identify what is actually working and what is not working. So anything that is not working, obviously don't want to keep wasting your time on it. Um, you, can, you may think that something is actually working and when you look at the numbers and you actually see the facts, it may not be. So this is really good for identifying what is actually working and not working. And if you are a visual person like I am, I also like to graph it. So by looking at this graph, we can easily see that there was a spike in month 12, so December, and it went really bad in October. We had lots of um, expenses. So having a graph is a nice, quick way to look to see you can track your progress over time. So onto the income and expenses tab, you can use this for any year. Um, you can use it, it doesn't matter um, when you start, you can start halfway through the year if you want to. Um, so you can use it for any year, not just for the current year. So I encourage you to save a blank copy of the spreadsheet and then you can just keep um, reusing that and renaming the file with the current year each year. So you purchase once and can use it again and again. So you can fill in all your own info here. This is a suggested one. You'll receive this blank one where you can write over the top and add your own um, expenses. I've included ones that are common to most Etsy shop owners as well. Um, and you can just type over the top if you don't need those or add your own. And if there are more that you want to add, you simply right click um, on this left here where there's a number where you see that arrow pointing, right click and go insert. And then you can add in extra um, expenses. Just be sure to copy down any formulas. So if you click in one of the total cells, we can see that that formula is going to read from B32 to M32. So that one's across here, so that one's fine but this one here reads across. So that one has a formula in it and this one does not. So just make sure that you click on the cell above that has a formula in it, left click and drag it down to bring that formula down as well. You can add multiple lines at once if you want to just left click and drag down. So if I wanted to add five lines, it's now going to add five. See how it says five R? That means it's going to add five lines or rows and then right click insert. So you can add as many as you want um, to suit your own business. So I've got things like Etsy fees, payment processing fees, refunds, because that's bad debt, um, shipping, packaging supplies, etc. And then for income, we've got Etsy craft shows, if you have blog, your own online shop, affiliate income, etc. And 
this you just enter in your um, values and it will automatically total it up for you. So if you wanted to, you could do a um, running total. So if, for example, you had lots of different payments, sorry, lots of different um, income received from blogging. So you might have um, advertising revenue from two different companies. Then you simply type up the top here equals and then the first amount plus sign and then the next amount and hit enter and it will total it up for you. The reason I recommend doing your totaling up within this cell is because it saves a whole bunch of lines because if you start having an individual line for each thing it just gets so like time consuming the spreadsheet gets way too busy and it's just really annoying to look at so for stationery if you get stationery from like five different companies you don't want to have five different lines the spreadsheet will be a mile long this is intended for a summary so like the total for each month so you can just have a quick look at it and go Okay, so I didn't spend too much on stationery in February. I spent nothing in June. Um, so you can track your spending. It's also good for cash flow planning. So if you know that you spend a lot at the start of the year, then you can forecast ahead and say, okay, I need to make sure that I have this much in my account to pay for that expense, which is going to come up, that subscription, is which is going to renew, etc. So then if you like to do your quarterly amount, so for tax purposes or just for your own um, progress tracking, it will automatically total the um, total for that quarter, so quarter one, two, three, and four. And then the other thing that I like to do is have the average. So that's also good for cash flow planning. So I can see that in uh, Etsy is my main income earner out of all of my income sources. And then out of my expenses, cost of goods sold is the highest. So you can also then look along here and go, okay, where can I find some savings? Where am I spending too much? Which months am I spending the most amounts in, um, et cetera. So then if we go into the tax deduction spreadsheet, this is where I record the details. So remember before when I said I just do equals, um, oops, it was in this tab here, where I just go equals X amount plus whatever. If you do want to include more detail, then this is where you would do it in this tab here. So if you wanted to record all different line items for those five places you purchased stationery from, you can do it here. So what I like to do is put the category in. So you're going to have a lot of expenses associated with running your business. If you want to get a total for your category, if you're doing some analysis or if you're sending it off to your accountant or however you want to use it, the spreadsheet has filters set up. So if you click this drop down arrow here, you can choose which expenses you want to see. So if you had a receipt and you weren't, you couldn't remember if you'd actually entered it into this spreadsheet or not, you can simply untick that select all box and then tick, let's say it was marketing, and then hit OK, and it will filter out all of the other tax deductions and only show everything in the marketing category. So you can see, okay, yes, I have recorded that expense. Cool, I can now file the receipt. And when you file the receipt, just put a Y in there or you could put a tick or you could just color the box if you wanted to. You pick a color. Um, however you want to do it, but I do encourage you to use this column because as I used to previously have so many receipts and I'll go, have I ever actually recorded this or not? And then I'd have to go sifting through looking at the amounts and it was just time consuming. So I like to get the receipt, take a photo of it on my iPhone and then I have a digital copy and then also have um, it recorded in here and then I file the paper copy. So that way, no matter what happens, I always have a record of it somewhere. So if my computer dies, I've still got the hard copy. If my phone goes, I've got a digital copy. And if all else fails, I've still got that paper copy. So I like to just do a brief description about the expense, the date that the expense was incurred. You could do the date that you paid for the expense, um, depending on which accounting system or method that you use, and then also the cost. And if you want to include any notes here, you can. Uh, like I said before, this little column here, when you see this little um, triangle, if you hover over that, it will give you instructions on what to do if you forget or you don't want to rewatch this video. So if you want to get all of your um, tax deductions back, just click on that button and hit select all. And then hit OK. So if we scroll down, we can see that we've got a running total happening. So that's a good way to track throughout the year. When you start recording lots of, of your tax deductions, you can go, okay, I've got about 3,000 now. And if you're on the cusp of one of the tax brackets, you might find that it's more worthwhile to prepay some expenses. So to prepay some subscriptions or get on an annual subscription and pay it up front, which you'll usually get a discount for anyway. And then you can record that expense on this year's tax. So you can save a bit of um, tax that you have to pay. 
So I do like to keep a check on that and make sure that it's not getting too high. And then in the notes column, you can record anything that you like. So if it was on back order and then you can go, okay, come back in November. Have I received that or haven't I? And if you haven't, you can contact the company and be like, hey, what's going on with my order, etc. Because if you're ordering a lot of things, it can be hard to keep track of what you've actually received and what you haven't received. So that's one way you could use this column. And then the next one we have is other income. So this one is like an extension of this section up here. So this expenses tab is basically your tax deductions one in more detail. And then for your income, we can come into the other income section. So you can link these tabs, these totals into this tab here if you want to. Um, it's up to you whether you want to manually type it in or not. So in here, you can include any other income that you earn that's associated with your business. So you might have done a sponsored post um, and got some income from that. You might have um, won a grant or something that's given you more money, You've won a competition, etc. You can include that in here. And then um, any fees that you had to pay, any um, and then the profit, the date that you actually received the income. So I know things like Google AdSense and advertising payments are usually delayed or they'll only pay them out once you've reached a certain threshold. So then I like to record the date that it actually appeared in my bank account and things like if you sell ebooks on Amazon, it takes about six weeks to actually receive that money. So I like to record the date that I actually received it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any clue if it's actually in my bank account or not. And as always, I include notes columns so you can include any notes that you want. You can filter using any, you can filter any of these with these little triangles here. So you can filter by type of income if you wanted to. You could filter all of the transactions for August if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you, but using spreadsheets is a really quick way to find exactly what you're looking for um, with your bookkeeping system. So you can easily track what is going on and then you can simply just save this file and send it off to your accountant when it comes tax time and they can see all of your transactions here. They can filter it out and just go, okay, I want marketing and whoops, unselect all, tick the one you want, and then go, okay, if you had multiple here, left click and drag. So for that category, they've got 300 bucks worth of deductions. Alrighty, and then the last tab that we have is the craft shows tab. So going to craft shows is a great way to um, meet your customers in person and network and find out what customers do and don't like because they will give you an honest opinion and you can see people's reactions to your products and if they do like it or not, which ones are popular, which aren't so popular. Um, they're actually really good for market research as well so you can see what your competitors are selling and you can see how much traffic their booths or their stalls are receiving and what sort of products they're selling as well. So it's good for your own business purposes as well as um, your competitors. So if you do go to craft shows, there is quite a lot involved in them. So I have actually created a separate planner um, for craft shows, which will include a link below this video if you want some help planning it. Um, so what I like to do after I go to a craft show, I use those printables I just mentioned, and then I also enter it into this spreadsheet here. So the date I went to the craft show, what it was. So I went to the Brisbane Planner Markets a while ago, so I included that in my spreadsheet. So I like to include the cost. Any other expenses, so things like if you had to pay for shipping to get your products there, if it was not in your own town, if you had to pay for fuel for your car, if you had to pay for things like display stands, a tablecloth, getting a poster printed, etc. Then your cost of goods sold for your products, then the revenue, so then the actual profit that you made. If you did use your own car, you can tax deduct the cost of that for the mileage, so make sure you put the date in that you recorded it in your mileage log. If you do need a tracker or a printable for that, I do have one of them in my Etsy shop and I'll include a link below this video if you would like it. And then the date that you updated your inventory. So you want to make sure that after you get back from the markets that you do a stock take, you have a look at what actually sold and what didn't sell. You update your inventory on your Etsy shop and your online shop if you have one on a separate website. So you want to make sure that you're not accidentally overselling things, that nothing was stolen at the markets. Um, etc. So then I like to record some notes. So based on this, I can see, okay, it was really expensive to be a stall holder and I didn't actually make any money off that. So I either need to up my game or take different products that are going to actually sell more. Um, we'll just take the most popular products or not attend that craft fair um, at all next year. So you can track whether it was actually worth paying a lot for a stall. Be warned, sometimes when the uh, stall cost is really low, it's usually an indication that it's not going to be very popular. 
So be wary. Remember that the time you spend, it's going to be the same regardless of what type of market you attend. So it's usually better to pay more for a stall because that's usually an indication that more people will be going and it will be more popular. So then you can track if um, you're actually making a profit from these shows and then um, also other statistics. So you might put something like, oh, this event was really far and away from public transport and hard to get to, so not many people attended, or this was on the same weekend as a public holiday, so a long weekend, everyone went away and they didn't attend the craft show, etc. So you can include any notes that you like so you can track your statistics and see which ones you should actually invest the time and which are worthwhile in attending. So that's basically the spreadsheets that I use to track everything related to the money involved in my Etsy shop. So there was the annual income where you can track your goals and your actuals and then the graph, income and expenses tab and then the tax deductions, any other income and then the sales log for craft shows. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope it gives you some ideas on how to do bookkeeping for your own Etsy shop. If you do want to purchase these spreadsheets I'll include a link below on where you can find them in my shop. So I hope you found it helpful and thanks for watching.